Okay, so in this video I'm going to go over factoring patterns. And so some of the ones we're going to look at are, first of all, factoring on a common factor. Then we'll talk about factoring by grouping. Uh, we'll get to difference of squares really quick. And then the last thing we'll talk about is the sum or difference of cubes. This one's not going to be as important, but still something we want to know. Now the whole point of this is going to be to take a polynomial that is in standard form and factor it so that we can look at the zeros and kind of figure out the multiplicities and things like that. So, our first one we're going to do here is going to be x to the fourth minus 2x to the third. And this will kind of show us this very first thing we want to be looking at on all of these. And that is for a common factor. And so when we look in both of these terms, what you're going to notice is x to the fourth has four x's in it, x to the third has three x's in it, which means that between the two of them we have a common factor of x to the third. And so what we're going to be able to do here is factor out x to the third and have x minus two left. So now we've got our completely factored polynomial. We look at here, we've got a, a zero at x equals zero with a multiplicity of three and a zero at two with a multiplicity of one. And so in factored form, we can go ahead and graph that. The next thing we want to look at here is going to be factoring by grouping. And so factoring by grouping is going to come into play anytime we have four terms usually. And so we're going to look at x to the third minus 2x squared minus x plus 2. And so the idea with factoring by grouping is we take these terms and we group them together. And we're going to look for a common factor in each term, in each group of terms. So in this first two terms, we've got x to the third and x squared. There's an x squared at least in both of them. So I'll factor out an x squared. And what's left is an x minus 2. Now when I do these, this next group, I'm going to look for an, a common factor. But the key thing is I want to have at least, or I want to have exactly an x minus 2, not a plus 2, a minus 2, left over. And as you can see, the signs are just opposite here. So I'm going to actually factor out a negative 1. So we have negative 1 times x minus 2. This is the key right here. We've got both of these terms with the exact same factor. That's what we're factoring out next. And so we take that common factor of x minus 2 out, and then we can have an x squared minus 1 left over. Now we'll come back to this one in just a second after we talk about difference of squares. Because that's not completely factored yet. <clears throat> so the la next thing we have to talk about is the difference of squares. And so first of all, I want to just talk about difference of squares backwards first. What happened if I took x plus 3 times x minus 3? And I wanted to multiply them together. So here I'd have x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 gives me negative 3x. 3 times x is plus 3x. And 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. In this case, these two middle terms cancel out, and I get an x squared minus 9. Factoring with a difference of squares pattern is just realizing that we can do this backwards. Any time we have this x squared and then minus a perfect square, we're going to know this is going to factor in a very particular way. And so here we've got x plus 3 and x minus 3. The 3 and the negative 3 give us our negative 9. The middle terms have canceled out, and x times x is x squared. And so here we've got that factored with our difference of squares. If we go back and look at this one now, we'll realize this isn't completely factored yet. This right here is a difference of squares. So I'm going to keep my x minus 2, and I'll know this one will factor as x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now I can see I've found all my factors. This is an x cubed, so we're looking for three factors. And now I know my x-intercepts are going to be at 2, negative 1, and 1. And I can get a really good idea of what this is going to look like when I graph it. Now, the last thing I want to look at is what is called the sum and difference of cubes. Now this isn't going to show up very much, but it is something you want to know about. And I will make sure I give you these formulas if you ever need them. So the first one we're going to look at is just going to be x cubed minus 27. So in order to do this, we're going to need our formula. And the formula looks like a to the third minus b to the third equals, and this is how it factors, a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. 
what you'll notice here is when we have this minus, this first one's minus, and the rest of them are plus. There's also a sum of cubes, a cubed plus b cubed, and this is gonna factor with the a plus b first, signs match there, and then this next one, a squared minus ab plus b squared. And so like I said, I'll give you those forms if you ever need them on a test. So this one we're looking at, the a in this formula is just our x, and this b, we gotta think of this 27 as a cube. So three cubed is 27, so our b is 20, is three, so b cubed would be 27. So to factor this, first of all I have my a minus b, which in this case is gonna be x minus three. Then it says a squared, which is gonna be x squared, plus a times b, which is gonna be three x, plus b squared, which is gonna be nine. Now, something to note on these. This second part here is never going to factor. In order to find the zeros that go along with that, our only other option here is gonna to be to use the quadratic formula. And we can certainly do that. So we'll find this one zero here at x equals three, and the quadratic formula can use, we can use the quadratic formula to find our zeros from that part. And we'll end up with a total of three zeros there. So the idea here is that once we've done this, we can factor any of these types of polynomials, and we're looking for their x-intercepts. We can use their first terms to find the degree, what the end behavior will look like, and we can use that last term to figure out the y-intercept. And so once we have the, the degree, the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, we're gonna to wanna to sketch a graph, and that's pretty much the whole goal of, of this sec first section.